Hello and welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Mike Moret, and today we continue our verse by verse study through the book of Deuteronomy. We come today to chapter 7, verse 12. Let's pray. Lord, we ask that our hearts are good ground, that we would hear your word and understand your word, and that your word would bear fruit in our lives one hundredfold. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, as we come to Deuteronomy chapter 7, Moses has been relating the law to the Israelites before he dies and before they enter into the promised land. So let's pick up our reading today in verse 12 of Deuteronomy chapter 7. Moses says to the Israelites, If you pay attention to these laws and are careful to follow them, then the Lord your God will keep his covenant of love with you as he swore to your forefathers. And the key word here in verse 12 is follow. They must follow or continue in the law of God in order for God to continue blessing them in the Holy Land. The big blessings of God are reserved for the obedient. Verse 13. He will love you and bless you and increase your numbers. He will bless the fruit of your womb the crops of your land, your grain, new wine, and oil, the calves of your herds and the lambs of your flocks in the land he swore to your forefathers to give you. We have just seen that they would be allowed to stay in their new land if they obey God. That's what we learned in verse 12. But there's a bonus. As a bonus, he'll also bless every aspect of their life in that new land if they continue to walk with him. Verse 14 You will be blessed more than any other people. None of your men or women will be childless, nor any of your livestock without young. And that was a huge deal back in those days because back in those days in that culture, it was a reproach if a couple did not have any children. Now, we don't think in those terms today, but that was the way things were back in those days. And God says, if you obey me, you'll have children. And we can carry the principle down for us today. And the principle is this. God promised to bless their families. It will be the way they want it to be if they obey him. And it's the same with us today. He will bless us, our relationships, our families if we live the way He wants us to live. Verse 15 The Lord will keep you free from every disease. He will not inflict on you the horrible diseases you knew in Egypt, but He will inflict them on all who hate you. If the Israelites obey the Lord, He won't have to wake them up spiritually by making them sick. And sometimes... That's the only way God can get someone's attention. Verse 16. You must destroy all the peoples the Lord your God gives over to you. Do not look on them with pity and do not serve their gods for that will be a snare to you. In other words, take no captives of all the nations the Lord your God hands over to you. No captives. Israel was to clean house when they get into the Holy Land. And again, that includes any idols that might be laying around. Verse 17. You may say to yourselves, these nations are stronger than we are. How can we drive them out? In other words, God says, if you start thinking to yourself, we are no match for the people that we are supposed to conquer. God says, if that begins to happen, if you begin to think in those terms, then do this. Verse 18. Do not be afraid of them. Remember well what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh and all Egypt. In other words, you start thinking, we are no match for those Canaanites that we're supposed to conquer. Then remember how God defeated Egypt for you. Egypt was more powerful than those nations in the Holy Land 
That's for sure. So if God delivered Israel from Egypt, when Egypt had Israel in their grip as slaves, well, he sure won't have any trouble defeating the Canaanites for them. Verse 19. You saw with your own eyes the great trials, the miraculous signs and wonders, the mighty hand and outstretched arm with which the Lord your God brought you out. The Lord your God will do the same to all the peoples you now fear. God has shown His great power towards the Israelites in Egypt, and that great power will work on Israel's behalf once again, this time when they enter into the Holy Land. Verse 20, Moreover, the Lord your God will send the hornet among them until even the survivors who hide from you have perished. In in other words, if any Canaanite escapes the sword of Israel and they try to hide in caves or crevices or wherever, God will send hornets to sting them to death. Verse 21 Do not be afraid by them. For the Lord your God who is among you is a great and awesome God. That is, do not be afraid of their large size or their large numbers because I the Lord am much stronger and I am with you, not with them. Verse 22 The Lord your God will drive out those nations before you little by little. You will not be allowed to eliminate them all at once or the wild animals will multiply around you. Now, this was good of God to tell them this ahead of time because if the Israelites start thinking, now, we're not defeating these Canaanites as quickly as we thought we would since we have God's blessing and everything, we thought, we thought we'd get rid of them a lot faster than this. What are we doing wrong? Well, if they start thinking in those terms, they ought to remember that God said ahead of time that He would do it rather slowly. See, if, if God destroys all the Canaanite peoples at once, then the wild animals will move into the area And that will be an even bigger headache for Israel. Verse 23. But the Lord your God will deliver them over to you, throwing them into great confusion until they are destroyed. And so God says not to worry. Don't worry about it. Slowly but surely, God will defeat the enemy until they are gone. It may not happen on your timetable, but it will happen. You have God's word on it. Verse 24. He will give their kings into your hand and you will wipe out their names from under heaven. No one will be able to stand up against you. You will destroy them. And so God will destroy all the kings in the Holy Land and wipe out their names. And God did do that. 31 Canaanite kings destroyed and all their heirs to their thrones as well. And so God says the kings of that land will be gone, forgotten, and never rise to power again. 25. The images of their gods you are to burn in the fire. Do not covet the silver and gold on them. And do not take it for yourselves, or you will be ensnared by it. For it is detestable to the Lord your God. In other words, destroy the idols... And if any of them are gold or silver plated or decorated with precious jewels, destroy that as well. Destroy it all. See, God did not want Israel to take any of that stuff home, no matter how valuable it might be. Or, you know, they might start looking at that stuff in a superstitious way, maybe seeing it as some kind of a good luck charm. And so, all the decorations, along with the idols themselves, are detestable to God and must all be destroyed. Verse 26. 
Do not bring a detestable thing into your house, or you, like it, will be set apart for destruction. Utterly abhor and detest it, for it is set apart for destruction, or cursed, is another way to put that. And so God makes it clear. No idols, no idols utensils, no idols decorations may be brought into any Israelite home, no matter how valuable it may be. And I suppose the temptation would be to take it if it was worth something financially. God says don't do it. They are cursed things. And bringing them into your home will curse your home. Symbols of evil should not be used to decorate the homes of God's people. Those sorts of things are detestable to God and unfit to have in a home that belongs to God's people. Chapter 8, verse 1. Be careful to follow every command I'm giving you today so that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land that the Lord promised on oath to your forefathers. God just keeps saying the same thing over and over again, doesn't he? If you've been with us for previous studies, you know that he does. And I'll tell you this, if God says something once, you can take it to the bank. If he repeats something often, then sirens and bells and whistles and lights ought to be going off in our minds because it is that important. Verse 2. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the desert these 40 years to humble you and to test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. God was not being vindictive by making them wander in the wilderness for 40 years after they rebelled. He was humbling them until they got it in their mind that they were nothing and God alone is to be exalted. And it was also, the wandering was also to test them to see if they'd obey God's commands through hard times as well as good. Because, you know, bad times really test our devotion to the Lord. Verse 3, He humbled you, causing you to hunger, and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your fathers had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Not by food alone does man live, but by every word that comes from God. Meaning this, God blesses the food, and God makes that food work for us. Without the health-giving, nourishment, blessing of Almighty God, food wouldn't do us any good at all. With His blessings, you could live on bread every day of your life for 40 years, just like the Israelites lived on bread alone, on manna for 40 years, but it was enough for them because it had the blessings of God on it. And so think about that. Nothing works for you unless God adds His blessing to it. Food. That's why it's a real good idea to ask God to bless your food before you eat it. Now, He may bless it anyway and give you nourishment. Most of the time He does because He's a good God. But it's, you know, that's not a reason to not thank Him for it and ask Him to bless it. Verse 4. Your clothes did not wear out. Stop there for a second. Their clothes lasted 40 years. That's pretty remarkable, considering the lifestyle that they lived. Their clothes did not wear out. That's a miracle. After wearing pretty much the same thing every single day, you would think that it would be reduced to rags, shredded after 40 years, definitely worn down, thin as paper, I would think. Well, I'd have holes in my knees. So would all the little boys and girls from from playing. Verse 4. Again, last part of it. It says, let's read the whole thing. Your clothes did not wear out, and your feet did not swell during these 40 years. 
Now, what in the world could that refer to? It could either refer to calluses, which after 40 years of a lot of walking would be a normal thing, or it could refer to the fact that a long journey walking often causes the feet to swell. At least I have read that that is the case. Whatever the point is, the Israelites were healthy because God had blessed them. And I think we better stop here for today. Lord, we pray that our hearts are good ground. Lord, that we have heard your word and that we will apply your word to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. And until next time, Mike Moret. For-